It was literally the worst trip I've ever been on. Whenever we would go out, the people would always shout, there goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, regardless of what our names were. The only way I got out was telling them that I had to go back and film Ask the Meat Maker. Welcome to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead, mead making, mead drinking, mead brewing, and really any question you're willing to send to me. TJ, one of our most reliable contributors, asked, how did your small batch equipment change when you went pro? Well, I used to mix up my mead in one of these with one of these. Now I mix it in here with these. Then I would ferment it in here. Now I ferment it in these. Then, last but not least, I would ball it right out of here, and now I get to use one of these. I do still use my buckets all the time, though. You know, as airlocks. Recently, there's been a lot of talk of the supposed health benefits of drinking mead. Now, mead contains alcohol, and doctors and scientists have an awful lot to say on this subject, but the people who are interested in the health benefits tend to be more interested also in anecdotal evidence. So we decided to go out and collect some of that. Boss, you're really strong. Would you say that mead has something to do with that? Yes, I'm sure it does, but not in the way you're thinking. Would you please just take one of these? No. Sir, can you tell us what you do professionally? I'm a Spanish to English translator, and I specialize in the translation of pharmaceutical texts, specifically case report forms and adverse events. You sound like you're extraordinarily smart. Uh, yes, that's correct. Do you drink mead? I do. Would you say that drinking mead has something to do with how bright you are? Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. Thank you. Sir, excuse me, sir, can you come over here? So you are, um, can I say startlingly handsome? Yes, that's a correct assessment. Um, do you drink mead? Why, yes, in fact, I do. Um, would you say that mead has something or a lot to do with how handsome you are? In fact, I'd say that mead has quite a bit to do with how startlingly handsome I am. Well, thank you. There you have it. Our next question comes from Professor Strauss, who asks, You said in two videos that you use cold processed honey. What does that mean? Well, honey can be essentially classified using two different means. One, the flower source, wildflower honey, almond flower honey, orange blossom honey, or the way it's treated, cold processed, raw, pasteurized. On one end of the spectrum, you have honey still in the comb. On the other far end of the spectrum, you have honey that has been pasteurized and filtered. That's nothing really more than a little bit of color, a lot of sugar, and a little bit of water when it's all said and done. We try to use cold processed honey, which means that the wax has been removed, because we don't want a waxy scum on the top of your mead, but we haven't lost all of those volatile flavors and aromas that make mead special. Our last question this week comes from Martha, who says, I saw an infographic you posted a few weeks back, and it said how much honey you use based on your weight. How much do you weigh? Martha! A gentleman never says his weight or his age. No, I'm just kidding. Here's the infographic for those of you who may not have seen it. As of this morning, at 8.52 a.m., I weigh 191.2 pounds and I am 28 years old if we're getting these things out of the way. That is our last question, and now it's time for me to turn it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky. This week's word is firkin. A firkin is an old-fashioned fermentation vessel roughly equivalent to 10.8 modern U.S. gallons. It is more often now used as part of the term firkin Friday, which is the name for a special one-off that you can only get at a brewery, or in our case, a meadery. And the reason we call it a firkin Friday is not because of the size of the batch we make, but because it sounds better than Hogshead Saturday. That is our word of the week and the end of our show. Please keep sending your questions and I will get to them as soon as possible. Cheers.